Welcome back to another episode of Door Kickers 2 Task Force North, where we've been using realistic military tactics and CQB doctrine to play this game. Door Kickers 2 Task Force North. For those who are joining us for the first time or haven't yet pulled the trigger on this game, if you want to grab a copy and support the channel, you can purchase this game from my game store at nexus.gg slash controlled pairs gaming. Guys, today we're taking a look at a randomly generated map. Early on in this series, we talked a lot in detail about close quarters battle tactics and doctrine. Today, I want to return to that and kind of depart a little bit from the campaign that we've been fighting through and just kind of return to the fundamentals and just take some time to explain several little concepts that I kind of reference frequently but then get asked a lot of questions about. And, uh, and I kind of just want to break down my thought process on, uh, on this little level here. Um, and uh, this is randomly generated. I've got no idea what to expect. I am going to just go um, straight assaulter, I'm pure, I'm very on. vanilla kits. On it. Um, yeah, wall shots, bangers, flash, frag, lots of that sort of stuff. What I'm not going to bring is a wand. Um, so I'm not going to be able to look under any doors. I want to do this completely blind and just have to make all of my decisions based off of the environment. I'm not going to even do an assessment of the level because it is randomly generated and our mission's to kill everybody. So, um, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not worried about rescuing a specific hostage, although there might very well be civilians on the battlefield. Uh, the first decision we have to make is where to deploy. I have four slots, four guys that can go in and, and fight through this place. First thing you'll notice is it's two different sections, two different sections of the building. So um, in a situation like this, I'm going to be looking for a way to separate one objective from the other. What I don't want to have happen is I get in a gunfight and then I have bad guys supporting one another from these two buildings. I want to be able to completely remove one from the, uh, the equation so that I'm able to enter and clear the other one. In a real world context, what you would likely do is have a bunch of other people on this mission with you, and it would be another element's job to perform that task for you. Because I only have four people and I want to illustrate accurately some of these tactics, I think I am not going to do that today, and instead I'm going to commit all four of my guys um, to the same building. And I think the building uh, that I would like to enter is, uh, is this one. And... Um, and so yeah, that's uh, that's what we're gonna do. Let's uh, let's go ahead and, and take a look. Um, we're uncompromised right now. So the first uh, the first tactical decision I have to make is how do I enter? And I could choose to go loud by putting a charge on this gate. I could go even louder and put a wall shot on this wall, um, or I could stay quiet and I could pick this lock. What what I choose to do is going to be based on my assessment of whether or not I think I've been compromised. In this situation, I don't think we have been compromised, so I'm going to choose not to go loud right now. I want to go loud at the last possible moment so that I am retaining the fundamentals of CQB, speed, surprise, and violence of action. So in an ideal circumstance, you're quiet until the last possible moment, and then when you go loud, you go very loud and you go very violent. And at that moment, you will have achieved speed from the point the target identifies you to the point that target is neutralized because you're now in his face, in his room, on his doorstep. So you have the speed and you've closed that distance. You have surprise because you were undetected until the last moment, until you've chosen to compromise yourself. And you have violence of action because this person is now becoming aware of your presence and a gun is in their face, an explosion is on their doorstep, assaulters are coming through their door. So that was, in a perfect world, that's how you maximize those things. In this environment, I'm going to go ahead and choose to pick this lock, which... Frankly, even that is unrealistic. No one's picking locks um, on a raid. It's not happening. Uh, but we'll go ahead and pick the lock because it's the quietest way in this game I'm able to get in. There's other ways to get in quietly uh, in the real world that we're not going to go into here. Um, we're going to pick this lock. Anytime you've got somebody working on a door, whether that person is a you know conventional breacher that's putting a charge on a door, whether it's someone hitting it with a sledge, um, whether it's someone working on it with a, with a tool meant to pry it open or some other means. Anytime someone's working on the door, we know this is a dangerous area. We're going to pull security for them. When we pull security for them, we actually kind of want to offset and stand over their head. In this game, that's hard sometimes because when they're working on the door, you're not really able to put a barrel over their head and pull security for them. So sometimes you're forced to kind of come around this way. Uh, I try to avoid that. Because remember, if there's someone out here and they hear something funky going on at that door, they're going to just start blasting through it. And, uh, and bullets travel through doors, so anytime you can avoid standing in front of it, you're going to. Um, so let's go ahead, and, and, and you'll see I'm cheating up the stack 
as we do this. Um, if I had a flank exposed, I'd be pulling rear security. I don't, so I'm not. Uh, what I would be doing is uh, putting my gun up and staring up at this wall because we're on the inside of this courtyard. There could very well be a ladder right here that we're just like blind to. And, uh, and if someone were to come on that ladder, they would be able to, to shoot us. They could also throw frags over here. In fact, we may end up, um, you know, using our own techniques um, to, to peek over this in some way uh, so that we have an idea of what's going on inside. All right, let's go ahead and pick this lock. Okay, as soon as that lock is picked, I'm getting back out of that fatal funnel. We don't want to hang out there. And... Uh, and so we're resetting the stack. We're now looking good again, and uh, and we are ready to enter and clear this room. I say room. It's really a courtyard. I have a couple of more options now. Um, we know we're, we're going to be able... Is that seriously still locked? Okay. I think it's already been unlocked. Um, if... We have a couple options here. I could go dynamic and perform an immediate entry into this courtyard. If I chose to do that, what that would mean is I'm coming quietly through this door and then I'm rapidly sending people this way and this way and this way and this way and then I'm pulling security like this and I'm pulling security like this and uh, I'm making a judgment call that I'm not going to be engaged coming through this breach. I don't know that that is wise in this situation because we don't have situational awareness on what is in this courtyard. There could be prepared defensive fighting positions. There could be people milling about and just rushing all four of my guys in there rapidly could be a very, very dangerous decision. We're going back to those fundamental speed, surprise, violence of action. We've still got surprise, but we could end up losing violence of action if the enemy is able to mass fires into this breach as we're coming through it. And then all of a sudden we are attrited and we've lost multiple members of our fire team before we're even able to get through the breach. So instead, I'm going to do what uh, what is frequently referred to as pying, uh, what is frequently referred to as combat clearance, um, or fighting from the threshold. That means I'm going to try to clear as much of this courtyard as I can before I go inside. I'm going to do that by coming up. I'm going to open this door quietly. As I open that door, I'm going to pull security for my buddy uh, who's going to be actually opening it because we don't want that guy to be at unnecessary risk uh, when he throws that door open because his gun is not going to be up so we're going to pull security for him and then once it's open we're going to look into the courtyard as best we can try to make an assessment on uh, on if it is safe to enter or not all right let's go ahead and do that now all right doors open i do in fact have one insurgent deep so we are going to shift a shooter this way and we're going to roll out with our breacher And that's what I'm talking about. If we had gone dynamic into this space, we would have immediately been mowed down by this machine gun that's up here fighting. All right, so we've got one guy dead. We've been compromised. We have an open door here, and we've got some security. I think what we're going to do, based off of what we have seen so far, is open up another breach point. I'm going to talk through exactly my logic, my reasoning here in just a second. Um, and I think it'll become clear to you guys. So... We've got a wounded assaulter drummer because he ended up in a long-range gunfight standing without a ton of cover. He's about to get in another gunfight here. Um, my threat areas are these breach points, this dead space, and then what my real concern is is right here because the, there's a, a calculation you make on the fly uh, to assess a threat, and that calculation is, is distance and time. What weapon system does that bad guy have and how close does he need to be to me to use it against me and how long is it going to take him to get that close and if I if I perform that calculation we can assess that if there's a guy here that we don't know about he's gonna be able to be very close very fast and remain undetected until the last possible moment he could even go so far as to chuck grenades in this way which would be an absolute worst-case scenario unfortunately fighting an enemy with that sort of munition is a risk of doing this sort of work um, and uh, and right now I'm making the assessment that fighting from this threshold and, and trying to kill these guys and these guys from as far away as possible is my safest option um, so we're gonna keep doing that and that's what I'm talking about that's why we have that good cross coverage those guys are gonna be able to get really close to me the reason I am now opening up a second breach is because I want more guns in this fight before I commit to it. So uh, we're going to end up getting cross coverage like so. When I say cross coverage, all that means is I have two assaulters mutually supporting one another, each pulling security a different direction as to maximize their sectors of fire and engage the enemy before they can be engaged. 
We're opening up a second breach now so that I will be able to engage with all four of my guns that are in this fight. Because right now, I've got two guys alone and unafraid fighting by themselves. Once I open this up, I'm going to be able to see deep all the way to this door. Uh, and I'm also going to be able to see deeper into this room. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. What I would say is a wall shot is a, a very large explosive. We would need significantly more standoff than is able to be achieved in this game based off of how it is set up. Um, right now we would uh, we would need to get further back um, and probably around a corner or at least uh, a, a certain distance away depending on the size of that charge the size of that charge a lot of that is going to be unit SOP a lot of that is going to be based off of what you're trying to get through um, and what you think the, the structure is going to be made out of uh, but let's go ahead and blow this here's a challenge <laughs> So we blew that wall. That wall is gone uh, completely. So now we have no cover and it's time uh, to get out of this fight. So we'll give it one more second to develop and then we've got to get out of this area. Um, my nearest cover, am I able to get in here? Yeah, I didn't think so. So based off me not being able to get back into this alleyway, my nearest cover is right here. Um, so that's where we're going to go. And, and we're going to do that by, I think, using the one piece of cover we do have right here um, and then flowing everyone else up and around this corner to stack here. Pull security deep while we do it. We'll give him a two man. Okay. All right, so what we're doing now is, uh, is I'm looking for a way to get my stack up into this position. We're using a technique called bounding. I have four people in my fire team. I'm going to move two of them, and then I'm going to move the other two. While two are moving, two are supporting. So the two guys that are remain back here will continue to pull security this way, and then I'm actually going to move somebody over here to pull security down this alleyway. That's going to allow my guys to get into this position. Biggest point of risk is when they turn this corner. This is uncleared area, and then this window can also engage us. Um, a risk that we haven't really talked about is this open breach. Um, that's going to be a challenge for this guy, I think. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we'll call. Well, he'll move on A. He'll move on B. Let's go ahead and make it happen. Okay, security is looking good. Bravo, go. Alpha, go. All right, see, we managed to bound forward. We had a couple successful engagements as we bounded. We're going to reset the sector of fire to right here. That gives me confidence now that I've got good security this direction. I have good security into this alley. I can see into this open breach. I now feel comfortable getting my next two assaulters up and into the fight. I do need to give them a place to hang out, um, so I will uh, do that. Barricade shooter. Hell of a fight here we got going, huh? This guy doesn't have a ton of security right now, so I'm sprinting him out of the way. All right, this is a problem. Um, anytime you face a barricaded shooter, which is exactly what this is, this is an enemy fighting from a fortified position in cover who knows my location and is putting rounds on it. Um, what you don't want to do is peek the cone of fire <laughs> that he is engaging you with. Uh, in this case, he's going to put rounds through this window until he is satisfied that I am dead. I am going to maintain security on his ability to maneuver on me, which is these two breaches, and I'm going to kill him with something that he is unable to, uh, while, something that while I employ it, he's unable to affect me with. In this case, I'm thinking a hand grenade. So I'm backing up. I'm pulling good security here. I'm pulling good security here. Give me somebody here to get a frag grenade into this space because I do not want to peek this corner. I stunned my lead man. He's all right. We, we will use this to kind of step forward and pull security for him. We, same thing, guys. We're fighting from thresholds. You see the the kind of... Um, see, I'm, I'm being methodical with how I move these people around. There's no reason for me to have come blasting through here and straight into this breach. That's a good way to die. Instead, I am fighting from these uh, these thresholds, being the, the, in this case, the windows, and I'm pulling good security throughout. Um, I do have wounded guys, which is uh, of concern. Um, but now that I am, you know, semi-confident that this room is clear and secure, I want to get inside of it and establish a foothold in this building. Um, as much 
fire as we has taken as much fire as we as we have taken outside and as as our guys have become injured there is value now in me getting inside an area that's going to provide me cover and concealment. Uh, what I don't want to do, though, is come around here through the main breach for a variety of reasons. I still have a breach here that I can't account for. I could get shot in the back from here. People back here could maneuver against me. People up here could maneuver against me. And that just makes this area very dangerous. So we need alternate means of getting inside. And I think what I'm going to elect to do is, is put a wall charge right there. But if I'm doing that, that means I need to have security. I could choose to go through the window. I don't like the idea of going through a window because I'm so exposed as I do it. And we've already taken a ton of fire. I want to turn those principles of CQB back up. And uh, we've lost surprise at this point. We've been in a bunch of gunfights. Um, we're being slow, but we're monitoring our speed by killing the people that are trying to kill us as fast as we can once we've identified their location. So in this case, it's not a hostage rescue. Speed doesn't necessarily mean sprinting through the objective. Uh, it means eliminating the enemy as fast as you can once you've identified his location and before he's able to affect you. And finally, that violence of action piece. We've lost some of the violence of action. There's a lot of dead bad guys, but I want to crank the violence of action back up by regaining the initiative. One of the ways I can do that is by destroying things and people with heavy or high explosives. Um, that sort of signature is going to be incredibly intimidating to the enemy, and it's going to allow me to regain the initiative and, and finish my clearance to this place. Uh, while I do all of that, I still need good security. So now I've committed security to this breach here. I'll end up being able to see here. Some dead space in here could still be a threat. I've got security to the rear. What I need now is to be able to pull security long, and so I'm going to do exactly that. That charge is set. We're going to bring our stack back. All right, this stack is looking good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and detonate this charge, and we're going to enter and clear this room. We've cleared most of it from the outside, but we haven't had eyes on it the entire time, which means it could have been reoccupied by the enemy. The way that we enter and clear a structure is generally referred to um, where I grew up as Battle Drill 6. Um... And, uh, and, and we've done a lot of threshold and limited penetration and combat clearance style fighting from outside of this building. As soon as we open this breach and we decide to go in, even if this building has been generally cleared visually and by fires from external, we are still going to perform a deliberate dynamic entry as the culminating exercise here. We're still going to execute Battle Drill 6 when we enter and clear this room uh, to ensure that little corners and little pieces of dead space have indeed been cleared. So we're going to go ahead and blow this charge. Now that that's been blown, we are going to go ahead and bang. I'm going to throw a bang all the way back here. As that bang goes out, that's going to be our trigger to enter and clear this area. What we're going to do is lead man is going to take the path of least resistance. I'll explain this as I go because people ask, ask this question all the time. Um, when performing dynamic entry, the concept's very simple. You want to create an L in the room. When you create that L with like an assaulter here and here, and here and here it allows our sectors of fire to interlock and when they interlock we're able to cover much more of the room um, and uh, and we have good fields of fire we're able to eliminate targets throughout the room the first decision that uh, needs to be made is whether the lead man is going to button hook or take the path of least resistance what i mean by that is a path of least resistance move would take him down this wall to this corner a button hook move would have him coming this way to this corner this is a corner fed room by corner fed room, I mean that the breach that we've opened is in the corner of it. In a corner fed room, everyone's going to their first corner. If you've got a four-man fire team, everyone's going to that first corner, and our L is going to look like this. Now, if the lead man has to decide path of least resistance versus button hook, what he's going to do is typically assess where he thinks the threat in the room is going to come from. Um, he can go either way, and a lot of unit units will use different SOPs to define where he'll go. Um, I'm a, a fan of the path of least resistance. Uh, I just think it feels more natural, lets you get into the room a hell of a lot faster. The risk there is you're not covering, you're not sweeping your muzzle across the entire room. So if there's people in the middle of the room or in the other corner, you are 100% trusting the person behind you to kill them before they kill you. Um, if not the path of least resistance, um, another factor that might go into your decision making is what have you seen and what have you not seen? So in this room, I haven't yet seen this corner, so that might lead the lead man to choose to button hook. Uh, I am of the opinion that this is a greater threat, and so I'm choosing to go path of least resistance with my lead man because I think this is more dangerous than this, and I'm going to go button hook with my two-man. Bottom line, 
The number one man is never wrong. And what I mean by that is he chooses whichever the hell way he wants to go. The two man must go the opposite way. The three man must go the opposite way of the two man. The four man must go the opposite way of the three man. If you do this and you do it fast and you get as many barrels through the threshold as possible and at as near the same time as possible, that's what's going to make you successful. So um, that bang's about to go off. I'm choosing path of least resistance for the, the one man. Um, what that means is as he's approaching, I'm going to have him peek through this window to look deep. Then I'm going to have him look here first. Uh, I'm, he's going to take a look deep. And then as soon as he crosses this threshold, he's clearing this corner, even though that corner's already been cleared. And then I want him holding that corner for the duration. He'll maintain that the whole time. Uh, two man coming in right behind him is going to button hook. That button hook will take him right here. Same thing. I want him peeking through this uh, this window because I think that that's probably a threat. Uh, however, different than the one man when he comes through the corner. Like, yeah, we'll let him take a peek deep. I got to pause here because this is a point of contention. A lot of people will tell you you must check this corner first. Like this has to be the first place you look no matter what. I think that's a perfectly valid argument. There's nothing wrong with training people that way. I like being able to check what I call the near threat or uh, the center of the room first. I want to give my assaulters permission before their muzzle breaks this door, before they've committed to the room, I want to give them permission to check deep into the middle of the room and take a snapshot on their way into the room. I think that uh, it's just a good way to mitigate risk because this otherwise would be the last place in the room that is clear. After that snapshot is taken, the moment that muzzle crosses the threshold, I expect that assaulter to immediately collapse to what we call that point of domination and clear his actual corner. So in this case, our muzzle is going to break the threshold right here. He's going to clear that corner. After that corner is clear, I need him to focus solely on this bathroom because I still have dead space back in this corner. Three men come in. Path of least resistance because he's going opposite the guy in front of him. Uh, and we already know we need to kind of create this L shape, which is going to look just like that. And then finally, the four man who's going to be the last in the room. Room should be clear. I'm going to bring him over here. You can see I brought him out of this window. I don't want him standing in front of that window. So he's crossing all the way over. Uh, and I'm going to have him covering this threshold. Cool. Cool. Actually, right there. Yeah, right there. Because he's going to be able to see both. All right, let's see how the boys do. Clean little entry. That's what it's all about right there. Clean little entry. We had one guy here. You saw my number one man. Um, he, he took what I believed was the greater threat uh, and he held it. The two men saved his life by engaging the guy next to him. And, uh, and then we still ended up getting this other shot. So where I predicted the two enemy to be, in fact, they were. Our next threat is uh, I still have an open breach here. I have to be mindful that this is absolutely an issue. So I think I'm going to do is come up like this. All right, so now I've got guns pointed at the things that I think are dangerous. This breach is dangerous because they're able to engage me from all the way across the way. This breach is dangerous because I still have dead space here. This breach is dangerous because our clearance must still go this direction. Next uh, next method of clearance or next area that we need to clear is this. That's a, a one-man clear. So I'm going to go ahead and pie off the rest of that room. And it is clear. Restacking this door. Uh, I am going to give this up. Like I said, uh, under a more realistic circumstances, we would have a team external that's pulling security down this linear danger area to prevent people in this building from influencing the people and the activities going on in this building. We don't have that in this game. I've got four fi uh, four person fire team, so we're going to use all of them. What that does mean, though, I'm opening up my flank now. And I'm going to have to maintain rear security. So I'm buying that obligation with my decision to collapse and continue clearance here. All right, next thing we're going to do, we have another corner fed room. This is a long hallway. We've already taken a bunch of contact. We're going to lead with a bang uh, for sure, for sure. So I'll throw a bang with this guy. I'll move up and kind of pull security for him like this. I'll collapse to here. Um, and now we're doing what's called a split stack. All, when, when you hear me say split stack, all that means is I've got a group of assaulters on one side of the threshold and a group of assaulters on the other side of the threshold. Don't let this confuse you. If you have a split stack, it's kind of just a, an efficiency thing. You're going to commit everyone from one side of the threshold first and commit everyone in the other side of the threshold second. In this situation, I'm committing this side first because they have seen the most of this room. This guy's thrown a bang deep. He's seen this entire portion already and he knows all he has left to clear is this and the threats here and here. It's a corner fed room. It's kind of a hallway. Um, and so it's uh, a, a little bit different. So I think what we'll do, let me get this bang out real quick. 
All right, so that bang is out. What I'm going to do is our first man, again, he's going to take Path of Least Resistance. He'll end up holding right here, and he's going to have good cover uh, to do that. My two-man is going to come through this threshold. Uh, excuse me, I just, I, I'm just i not even listening to my own advice here. we got to commit everyone on the same side first. I do have a little slice of dead space there that I want to clear, so our two-man is going to come through. He's going to clear that dead space. And as soon as that dead space is clear, I'm going to have him push right there and just take up a position on uh, on the opposite side of the number one man. Um, I'm going to let them get in there and fight from this cover. And then once I'm satisfied that this room is clear and secure, I'll commit more people. The reason I'm, I'm thinking that is because there's places for the enemy to hide here. And this is just a long danger area. And if I commit the whole fire team, there's no cover on the opposite side of the room. I have the luxury of knowing that in door kickers. You may not have that luxury in real life. But based off of me having that information, this is uh, the decision that I, I'm making here. Yep, so this is, uh, this is a challenge. Um, we're going to go ahead and get these guys to take a knee. God damn. Do you have cover? I don't know if they have cover or not. So th this is why we didn't commit the whole fire team, guys, um, because something like this could happen. It, this game's mechanics are a little bit strange. Uh, of course, real world, these two guys would just be mowing this dude down through the furniture. For whatever reason, you can't fire from a knee and door kickers, at least right now. Uh, what I'm going to do is use Philly to maintain rear security and uh, and use, who is this, drummer to, uh, to help his buddies out here by getting a flashbang right there. Not throwing a frag. My friends are too close. All right, enemies reloading. The banger's out. He stands up, our boys engage, and uh, and we're able to satisfy that challenge there. So that, that was a really dangerous situation. We've got a bunch of banged up dudes now. Um, we could very well lose somebody during this fight. And they did fire from a knee, so that was good to see. Or maybe it was my bang. I don't know how that uh, mechanic worked, but it worked out fine. Um, now I've got two challenges. I've got uh, open breach here, open breach here. I have a bunch of guys that have fired a bunch of bullets, so we're going to go ahead and start thinking about mag changes. And I don't want to change mags with him because I he has rear security, so I'm going to provide rear security while he changes mags. All right, we never drop security. Um, all right, let's continue our clearance. This is a threat. This is a threat. I'm going to maintain long security, enter and clear this corner fed room. Uh, let's do it. We'll press here. That's too far. Stuff that we just exposed ourselves to without even talking about. That's super dangerous. It's these damn windows here. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is kick this guy up here to maintain security, push long, and pie off the rest of this. Okay, looking good there. These windows can be very, very dangerous. Um, it is a, a risk like anything else. We don't have rear security right now. That's another risk. Um kind of challenging situation what we're going to do i think is uh, our two man is going to throw a bang here another two man is going to throw a bang right that's not a very good one i can pull long with this guy we're going to put those bangs in and now we're going to press forward this guy will end up pulling security through this breach uh in this case it's a corner fed room i'm going to have three guys to do it because i have to maintain security on this breach while we clear so I'm going to press forward into the path of least resistance. This is a corner fed room. He's taking a single wall. Two man will be this guy. He's coming up here. He'll take this wall. Three man is going to drop rear security and end up coming in and taking this wall. We all know the drill. First time before that muzzle breaks the door, he's going to clear deep. As soon as he comes through this room, he's going to clear those two corners. Once those two corners are clear, I want him middle of the room for the duration. Two man. Same thing, I want his muzzle checking deep, and then as soon as he breaks, I want him taking this corner. Once that corner is clear, I want him centered up, and three man. Is it you? Yeah, it's you. Same thing. Much easier job as a three man. Uh, the risk we're now exposing ourselves to, of course, is, uh, is this breach, and I think what we're going to do is uh, we'll press forward into security here, and then cross, and I want him pulling security on this that whole time let's go
Okay. And uh, and that room is cleared and secure. Biggest risk now is the fact that we don't have rear security. So the first thing I'm going to do is get somebody out there to pull rear security. Um, so that our flank is protected. Because remember, we still have this entire problem. We have an open breach here. They could be coming after us. Okay. Here's another uh, little tidbit. So we're often tempted to move along hallways and stack in hallways and move from room to room. Under that sort of thinking, I would restack out here in preparation to move. There's no reason for me to do that. I'm safer in this room than I am in this hallway. I need two people in this hallway because I need someone to pull security in this threshold and I need someone to pull rear security. Uh, but I don't need these two in the hallway, so there's no reason to put them at that risk. Um, we are running out of flashbangs, which is a good feeling. We're going to go ahead and buddy swap these guys. All right, we're going to put a flashbang here. And uh, on the employment of handhelds, I could be throwing frag grenades now just as well. Um, but flashbangs are very effective in door kickers. But frags, flashes, whatever. Bottom line, after you take this much contact, there's no way you're going into these spaces without prepping them with something. Be it fires, uh, a handheld, uh, a frag grenade, whatever the case may be. Um, so I'm going to put a flash right there. Uh, that'll allow me to, uh, to enter and clear this next space. And then, of course, once we get in there, I've got a room of concern here, a room of concern there. The plan will be to pull security on one door, enter and clear the other, and, uh, and then transition. So let's go ahead and do that now. That banger's going out. While it's in the air, I can start cheating up. All right, it's gone. Uh, number one man in this situation, I'm going to have him go long and then hold short. Again, muzzle's checking there, muzzle's checking there. As soon as he crosses the threshold, he's going to go deep, and then he's going to hold deep. Two-man needs to be like on his heels right behind him, and he's going to end up just maintaining security. Well, first thing he's going to do is check this. He's going to maintain security on this door. Three-man will press. Oh, these are open windows, so that's a great call right there. Um, I'm going to need someone on these windows, so I think I'm going to leave... One, just like that. And then, finally, the four-man will end up coming up here to stack, like so. Glad we got lucky there. Uh, we couldn't tell that that was an open breach. Um, now that it is open, it is our biggest threat. So, you always kind of attempt to clear the next threat whenever you know what that threat is. Uh, might be so in this case we've got an open breach that's our biggest threat I've got somebody available to pie it and that's exactly what we're gonna do all right that room has been cleared I'm able to restack and just set long rear security now so now that our flank is protected we're looking good outside before we go in I do kind of want to check both of these areas we're looking good outside I moved a wingman up with him to pull security on this door so if he starts getting shot through the door we immediately have someone on that same angle with his plate facing the enemy ready to put rounds back through that door on his behalf all right I've got a three-man stack ready to go in this room with as much contact as we've taken we are going to go ahead and go explosive on this door lot of risk two areas there's a lot of risk here one we're doing an internal explosive breach breach that comes with some complexity in the way of blast overpressure uh, and then two, I'm asking a guy to stand in front of a door and put a charge on it after we've taken a bunch of contact. Enormous risk there. Um, real world, you could offset a little bit and take some cover behind the wall and kind of lean over and get it done. In this game, you can't. Um, so I acknowledge there's risk. However, look where the door handle is here. See that that, uh, that door handle's right there far away from this altar. So I would want to put my stack on this side if I could, but there's no space really. Um, so if I asked this guy to go in under real conditions, he'd be reaching all the way across the door to work that door handle anyway. Um, so similar risk. It wouldn't be as prolonged as putting a charge on the door, but it is similar risk. Charge is set. All right, so we'll blow this door. We'll put in a flashbang right behind it. If anyone has a flash, we do. So we have to reshuffle a stack. Number one man doesn't throw flash ever, uh, unless you like absolutely have to. He needs to have his gun up. Two men can uh, get the flash going. All right, so there's a flash. One man, two men. And this is a, a short room. What I mean by short room is it, it simply doesn't require uh, the same number of people to clear as another room. And it is now clear and secure. This building is now clear and secure with the exception of a little bit of dead space here. Um, while we have a second, again, let's go ahead and change mags. Same principles apply. We aren't going to change mags with people who are busy. 
pull in security. So we give them a buddy to cover them so that they can change their magazines. All right, now this is all said and done. We're going to start heading back to reposture on the next challenge. Um, and, and like I said before, this space may have been reoccupied by the enemy. So there is a, there's a lot of risk with me just kind of moving back in such a, um, a hasty fashion. Uh, but I do think, um, you know, obviously it's door kicker, so I feel relatively safe doing it. And this is what we would kind of refer to as, uh, like doing a back clearance. Um, cause even though we've killed everyone in here, we think there could be very well someone hiding under a couch or in a closet, um, or, uh, or wounded and still trying to get to a weapon or something like that. You just don't know. All right, I don't have any smoke. Um, that's what I would want under this sort of circumstance. But what I do have is someone who's able to pull security. So I'm going to leave Bacon here pulling security into this breach. I'm going to move the other three to stack for me right here. Now the question is, where do we enter? We still have wall shots. And so I'm not going to use this explosive breach. Or I'm not going to use this... Um, that main breach right there. I'm going to go explosive and remember speed, surprise, violence of action. We've lost surprise. We have speed in a sense, but we've lost a little bit of our tempo because now we've had this big lull in our fight here and the enemies had a lot of time to prepare to defend themselves over here. Um, and so we need to regain the initiative with violence of action. I think one of the best ways to do that in this sort of situation is again, uh, go into a wall charge and I appear not to have any, of course, damn it. <laughs> I used them up. We've been too violent. Uh, there's other ways to be violent though. One of those ways is throwing frag grenades and uh, and flashbangs. I'm going to save that flashbang actually, but I am going to pull forward and pull security for my buddy. All right, so as that frag goes out, we're going to begin moving to... Next frag is going to go there. I'm going to move up and pull security for my buddy while he does that so the number one man isn't exposed. Now he's got his gun back up. And now I'm able actually to bring my final assaulter over here. We did that same technique, that bounding technique we've talked about a couple times. All right, let's go ahead and, uh, and, and again, I don't feel the need to go dynamic into this room. What I see is an open breach, an open breach, an open breach, and a lot of bad ness going on. So what I'm going to do is try to pie as much of this as I can. Uh, so I'm going to go wide like that, maintain security, and I'm going to give him a wingman because guess what? We've got another threat right there. And then while those guys are moving, I'm actually going to kick out, I think, long and pull security right there. All right, we've seen a lot of badness in here, um, a lot of indicators that the enemy is still occupying this area. So what we'll do is try to get another frag in if we can. There we go. Um, and because we've taken so much contact, we've seen such a overt enemy signature. I think I want to get eyes through this window before I am comfortable committing my assault team. So I'm going to maintain cross coverage right here. I'm going to kick a three man up here. And then I'm going to have these guys do this number. All right, I've cleared the rest of this. I'm reasonably comfortable based off everything we've seen that that place is not going to be occupied. Now I'm going to clear as much as I can from external right here. All right, so now I've got this room clear. Pretty sure that this room's clear. 
but look how much safer I just made these guys. So if I just maintain this position, I can see this breach. So if there is anyone in this space, they're not going to be able to surpri surprise my buddies. And if anyone decides they're going to come blasting out of this bathroom, they're also not going to be able to surprise my buddies. I can even decide to go ahead and just throw a frag down here to get this door open uh, so I can take a peek inside. So let's go ahead and do that. Nothing seen. We don't know exactly where the enemy is, but we know they're in this building somewhere, so we're going to keep working this. Keep throwing frags in uncleared spaces. And there he is. Man, I hope you guys uh, learned something from this. Really simple, short, small level, um, but it was a really good chance to share a lot of the way that my brain works when I play this game. And I don't get to do a lot of that during the campaign just because of the complexity of those missions. So simpler missions, still a challenging one, randomly generated. I recommend this seed. That was actually really good. And, uh, and I hope that you guys got something out of it. I'm uh, really glad that you're watching. If you want to buy this game, you can do it from my game store at nexus.gg slash controlled pairs gaming. If you want to play video games with me, you can join my Discord server. If you want to support the channel in other ways, you can also become a channel member for as little as 99 cents a month. If you choose to do that, you get all sorts of dope perks like playing games with me, access to our members chat on Discord, and access to our members only game nights. I'm controlled pairs. I play the most immersive tactical shooters and combat sims in the world. This has been Door Kickers 2 Task Force North, and I'll see you in the next one.